All those families that today shine according to their brilliant lineages had low and obscure beginnings. Juan de Mariana, La Dignidad Real y la Educación del Rey. Hello and welcome back again. The discussion now centers on the future of Sancho's children. We learn that his family is pre-nuclear, composed of two parents and two children. Sanchico is already 15, and though he has not gone to school, he can expect help from his uncle, the abbot. And Mari Sancha is old enough to marry. Sancho fantasizes about marrying her to a noble. Woman of mine, I'll marry Mari Sancha so high up that nobody will be able to reach her without calling her your grace. Pragmatic, Teresa objects. Oh, please, no, Sancho, marry her to an equal. She tells Sancho to focus on money. You bring home the bacon, Sancho, and leave the matter of her marriage to me. She doesn't want to see her daughter in those courts and in those great palaces where they won't understand her and where she won't even understand herself. Sancho's response is funny, but also ominous. Technically, he makes himself analogous to the rebellious criminal famously freed in exchange for Christ. Come here, beast, wife of Barabbas. Why would you want to stop me now, and for no good reason, from marrying my daughter to someone who'll give me grandchildren they'll call Lord and Lady? Here the narrator again interrupts to note the implausible nature of Sancho's discourse. This manner of speaking and what Sancho will say below are why the translator of this history says that he considers this chapter apocryphal. Sancho's language also reveals his corrupt view of government as a means of obtaining wealth. It will be good for me to land myself a lucrative governorship which will lift me out of the mud. Did you know? During the Renaissance, weddings were often political and economic arrangements designed to maintain social status or acquire wealth. By contrast, many modern readers believe that Don Quixote's love for Dulcinea is an expression of sincere desire. In other words, Sancho is a rent seeker. We should also pay attention to Sancho's choice of Arabic words for certain textiles when he imagines his wife's wealthy future. He adopts the medieval perspective of a crusader who gets rich by reconquering the Moorish South. You'll see how they'll call you Doña Teresa Panza, and you'll sit in church on a carpet with cushions and tapestries, alcatifa, almohadas, y arambeles, all regardless of and in spite of the town's hidalgas. Note the social tension expressed by a peasant whose ambition is to compete with the hidalgo caste. What kind of family does Sancho Panza have? A, an extended family. B, a blended family. C, a nuclear family. Correct answer, C, a nuclear family. Teresa wants wealth, but she insists that Sanchica should marry within her own rank. She will resist Sancho's desire to climb the social ladder by ruling over a frontier province, and she does not care about titles. I fear that if my daughter becomes a countess, it will be her ruin. And do what you want, whether you make her a duchess or a princess, but I say to you that it won't be with my agreement or consent. They baptized me Teresa, a modest and simple name, without any additions or decorations or trimmings of dons or doñas. She also takes a swipe at Don Quixote's desire to transgress the social hierarchy. You go with your Don Quixote. And by the way, I don't know who gave him a Don because neither his parents nor his grandparents had one. That's all for now. We'll see each other in our next video. If you liked this video and want to continue learning more about the knight errant Don Quixote de la Mancha, you can subscribe to our YouTube channel here. Also, you can enroll in our free online course on Don Quixote by clicking here.